Hey, what's going on, Guardians? My name is The Black Link, and as we inch ever closer towards the release of the incoming Destiny 2 DLC, Forsaken, I've been seeing a rather interesting conversation sparking up throughout the community, uh, mainly surrounding the pricing structure, the cost of the Forsaken DLC. And as a part of that conversation, I've noticed the trend of some Guardians questioning why we as players who've gone through the tumultuous times of Destiny 2 should have to pay in order to fix the game of D2. I just wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about Forsaken, talk about my personal feelings when it comes to the pricing structure for the DLC, and what exactly is going to be coming, the differences between these different packs. Alright, so let's just go ahead and dive on into it. Now, the first thing I kind of wanted to clear up and talk about is the notion of having to pay to fix the game. That's definitely something I've been seeing a lot in the community over the past couple of days. And it kind of brings me over to the Destiny 2 development roadmap that was put up by Christopher Barrett a day or so ago, showing off some of the things that are coming to the game in the near future. Now, it's important to stress this. Everything you're seeing on this roadmap right here is free to all players of Destiny 2, regardless of whether or not you buy Forsaken. This includes a lot of the biggest changes that are coming to the game, stuff like the 6v6 playlist changes, bounties, uh, randomized weapon rolls, the changes to weapon slots, gear collections, in-game triumphs, a lot of the stuff that is what is going to be fixing the game is going to be free to everybody who plays Destiny 2. And the reason I say that is because I've had a couple of people come to me in stream uh, basically with, with that sort of narrative, with that question of why why do they have to pay in order to get randomized weapon rolls and, and something to actually grind for, all these big quality of life changes. So I want to go ahead and dispel the notion that, uh, that you actually have to buy the DLC to get everything on this development roadmap. All the stuff you're seeing here from update 1.2.3 to 2.0, everything except, of course, the Forsaken DLC itself, is free to every player of D2. All that stuff on this list right here is coming to you. This is something that's been confirmed on Twitter by Christopher Barrett. All of the changes that are listed on the development roadmap are things that every player of D2 is going to be able to enjoy. So if you're somebody who was worried about having to spend money to get stuff like random rolls and weapon changes and some of the new Crucible game modes and maps and stuff like that, you don't have to worry about that. Regardless of whether or not you own Forsaken, you're going to get this stuff when it comes out. Now that that's been said, let's go ahead and talk about the pricing structure of the incoming DLC. Alright then, so first things first, we know Forsaken is running at a retail of $39.99, 40 bucks in the US. I know that's going to be different for some other countries out there. I think Australia usually gets like the worst of it when it comes to the, some of this stuff. But the base price of the DLC is $39.99, and to be perfectly honest, I find that to be a pretty fair price. Most of the time, these big expansions for Destiny, like the Taken King, they come out at that same price point, so that doesn't really surprise me at all here. I personally never really had any other expectation for a price point for Forsaken, so the $39.99 price point doesn't bother me as much. That's the same that the Taken King was, although I do believe Rise of Iron was $29.99 when it first came out. But this is looking to be a larger scale expansion, uh, much more similar to the Taken King than it was to Rise of Iron, or any of the other DLCs we got from Destiny 1. So I don't have a problem with the $39.99 price point. It's when you start adding in some of the other things that I really understand where a lot of people are coming from. And of course, by other things, I do mean the annual season pass. This was kind of the sour note of the Destiny 2 Forsaken reveal livestream that Bungie had. And I can definitely understand why a lot of people are a little bit unhappy with the price point. It is sitting at a price of about $29.99, 30 bucks. But what are you getting in that annual season pass? What's, what's coming in this... $30 pass. Well, you can head to any of your favorite gaming storefronts, whether it's PSN, Xbox Live, GameStop, or even the Blizzard app if you play on PC, and you can actually see the different price points for the different packs of Destiny 2's incoming DLC. First things first, you'll notice the Digital Deluxe Edition for $79.99, 80 bucks. That comes with Forsaken, it comes with the Annual Season Pass, as well as an extra 10 bucks for some special uh, unique items that you can get. That include like an ornament for an exotic bow, a new ghost shell, and an emblem. But that annual season pass is the real stickler here, because asking 30 bucks on top of the $40 price tag that's already coming out, what are you even getting in the annual season pass? Well, here's what they have to say about it. Alongside seasonal updates and live events available to every Destiny 2 player, Forsaken Annual Pass provides bonus rewards and introduces three premium content releases anticipated in winter of 2018, spring of 2019, and summer of 2019. 
Now, during the live stream, Deej went on to describe these as basically being their new way of funding incoming events and content releases throughout the year. Kind of like the way Eververse was supposed to fund uh, events and whatnot, they're utilizing the annual season pass now as a way to fund continued development of incoming minor content, not to the level of uh, major releases like Curse of Osiris and Warmind, but more along the lines of things like the Taken Spring, if you remember that back in the Taken King, and possibly even the Age of Triumph. But what we're really here to talk about is the price point of it. An extra $30 overhead charge on top of the $40 you're already going to be paying for Forsaken. Now, like I said, I have no problems with the price point for Forsaken. That's about what I expected anyway. But I wasn't expecting an annual pass to be added onto here. I like that they're, you know, being upfront about utilizing this to fund incoming content. But of course, previously in Destiny, we got some of that incoming content without the $30 price tag. If you remember Age of Triumph, that wasn't, that didn't really have to charge players anything. So I definitely understand when people look at the pricing structure of this and say wait a second 70 bucks to experience the full d2 experience 80 bucks if i want the extra stuff for a dlc moving forward that that's kind of a that's kind of a big big pill to swallow there and i can agree with that i definitely agree that an extra 30 bucks on top of the 40 bucks is is a little bit questionable in my opinion even though I do understand the reasoning for why they're charging for this sort of thing, it doesn't make me any happier to spend an extra 30 bucks. I mean, you guys know I'm going to do it. I'm a Destiny content creator. I basically have to. And I'm more than certain that I'll get my money's worth of time out of it. Now, I've, I've talked to a lot of people on and off stream about how they feel for the pricing structure of this. And, you know, it breaks down to basically $10 per content release. $10 for Joker's Wild. $10 for the Black Armory. $10 for Penumbra. Which, when you look at it like that, that's not too bad. If Bungie goes forward and, like, maybe breaks up the price so you don't have to buy all three of them at once, if you could buy them individually, like you can do with DLC packs, that might be a little bit better. And I certainly heard some talk about that being the case moving forward. I don't know if those options have popped up on most, uh, most digital or retail storefronts for these three content releases that are tied to the annual pass. But the point here is, is it worth the extra $30, especially for content that previously we've gotten free, after a lot of players have already invested a lot of money into Destiny 2? And a lot of players would say that some of the money that they put into D2 hasn't really panned out for the best. I mean, certainly, Curse of Warmind's good, but Curse of Osiris probably wasn't worth the overall price of admission, so when you're... Totaling all of this up, paying 60 bucks for the original Destiny 2, maybe more if you've got like the season pass, like the 30 bucks for that, plus another 40 bucks for this incoming DLC with Forsaken, which I'm fine with, but then another 30 bucks on top of that to get some upcoming seasons of content that are going to be like smaller content releases, maybe not quite to the scale of Curse of Osiris and Warmind. Yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's a lot of investment for one game, especially one game that has thus far really not lived up to the potential that it was supposed to have. And so, looking at it from that lens, the lens of a consumer like that, I can definitely understand why a lot of people are trepidatious when it comes to dropping another 70 bucks on Destiny. I know if I weren't a content creator, if like my channel weren't kind of built upon the foundations of Destiny and video games as a whole, I would probably hold off on at least spending the 30 bucks for the annual pass. I would buy the, the, the DLC because I want to play that, but I would probably hold off on spending that extra 30 bucks. And part of that is because we didn't really know what exactly was coming within this annual pass, within those three content releases. We talked a bit about this in the TWAB video. They put out another infographic that broke down the differences between the Forsaken major expansion, the seasons that are going to be free for all players of Destiny 2, and the annual pass. And more so, we got some interesting information about some of the content that we'll be getting in the annual pass. Because the big question, uh, more so than the pricing structure of all this, is, is it going to be worth the money? And so we now know, thanks to Christopher Barrett, that the annual pass content releases, those three content releases are going to include pinnacle activities, more weapons and armor, new and returning exotics, more in-game challenges, unique vanity rewards, more triumphs to collect, more lore to discover, and more raid layers. Those last couple of things, the more in-game challenges, the more raid layers, those are some of the big ticket items that I wanted to take away here because but previously they didn't really explain that raid layers and content like that, pinnacle activities, in-game content, were going to be tied to the three content releases in the annual pass. That virtually makes them kind of like almost mini DLCs. 
You know, it sounds like we're actually going to be getting some significant content within these three releases tied to the annual pass. And that eases me a little bit more when it comes towards spending money on them. Of course, you know, with uh, with D2 right now, thus far we've had 20 bucks for Curse of Osiris, 20 bucks for the Warmind DLC, which had, you know, some new gear added into it, some exotics brought back, and Raid Lair. Now we're essentially going to be paying 10 bucks for, you know, Penumbra, for Joker's Wild, for the Black Armory, scheduled for winter 2018, spring 2019, summer 2019, that are all going to have hopefully raid layers and game content tied to them. Uh, yeah, now now that I know that there's some serious in-game stuff tied to it, that eases my thoughts on the price of it just a little bit. And while it is still weird for Destiny 2 as a game to be having a second basic season pass, you know, a year or so into its release, now that I've at least got a better idea of what's coming in it, and what's coming in it seems to be some significant content that generally would be tied to a DLC either way, I feel a little bit better. I feel a little bit more at ease about the price, but I can still definitely say that 70 bucks to get the full D2 Year 2 experience is a lot of money. I really hope it's going to be worth it. But alright Guardians, that is going to be it for this one. Again, I just wanted to take some time to explain the differences between what you're getting in Forsaken, what you're getting for free with the seasonal changes, and what's going to be within this annual pass, and give you my ideas on the overall pricing structure. Um, if you're not somebody who, like, lives to play Destiny every day, I would say, you know, maybe check out Forsaken, spend the 40 bucks for that, hold off on the season pass or annual pass for the three content releases until you know the stuff coming in that is going to be worth your money. But anyways, those are my thoughts. Be sure to leave me yours down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest stuff we're putting out. Or if you want to support the channel, we've got a link to our Patreon and our Teespring storefront down in the description box below. Be sure to check them out. But alright, that is it for this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I am the Black Link. You Guardians, stay frosty.